What's the single biggest problem that faces the whole state as a result of this, uh, of this recovery effort? Well, the, the biggest issue for me is helping Vermonters get back into safe, permanent housing. Okay. 3,500 homes were damaged uh, in some way by Irene, and many Vermonters were dislocated from their homes. So that's the highest priority, really, is to help them get back. And one of the great, again, stories of our recovery is that we do now have a network of support. We have volunteers still working every day uh, to help those Irene survivors get back in their homes. We're raising money, the sale of our I Am Vermont Strong plates, um, but that's just part of the work being done to try to raise money and support ongoing survivors. It's helping them get back on their feet and back in their homes. So for me, that's a high priority. How many, ha do you know? How we many know right now that we have case managers out and we know of 900 still open cases. And that's a broadly defined uh, challenge. Some of them are still trying to get into their homes. And you know, the volunteer spirit that we saw right after Irene, which I think is really the hallmark of our response, is neighbor helping neighbor, literally thousands, <laughs> tens of thousands of spontaneous volunteers throughout the state. Many volunteers are still working to rebuild homes, and there are stories each week of folks from Vermont and even outside of Vermont coming to help rebuild homes. And, and these 900 are both those whose homes were damaged and, and those who just were dislocated for a while? Yes, and some who were dislocated, another important story and really a milestone is that we are trying to take advantage of a program uh, from FEMA called the Hazard Mitigation Program to support homeowner buyouts. And there are 129 people that have had applications approved by a state committee that now await approval by FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, right. uh, to be able to actually be bought out. The federal government would pay 75%, and the state is stepping up to pay that remaining 25%. Normally, that is the cost that a town or an individual has to pay. But what happens is an individual who's lost everything can actually move away from their home. It's a very bittersweet uh, challenge. But, it, but they, they at least will have the money to, to, do, to, to find new shelter. Yes. And not only that, but then that building is taken away and that property becomes permanent um, parkland or undeveloped land. And what's important about that is that land is the reason that that home is eligible is because it's in harm's way potentially for the future. So we're not only helping folks move out of harm's way and get back on their feet in another location, we're restoring the river floodplain, which is going to be important if we see more flooding events, and we certainly appear that that's uh, our future. We need to be thinking about the future, preparing and restoring floodplain so that it actually protects uh, other areas. So this is interesting because in addition to that, in, in the rebuilding, I'm being told, of, of everything, houses, businesses, and even transportation facilities, some of it's being rebuilt differently in order to make it more floodproof or flood resistant. Bridges are being, are, are being built higher, some of them that... Culverts are... Absolutely. Right. This is so important because we are committed to Governor Shumlin's goal of building back stronger. And in the transportation arena, it's very clear that we need to have larger bridges and larger culverts. And, you know, those are the pipes that the water goes through. Those are what got blown out all over the state. On the state system, you know, we are working with the Federal Highway Administration. And on the town road and bridge system, it's the FEMAS program. Is there a, a concern that with climate change, we're going to get not necessarily another Irene next year or the year after, but that it may not be another 75 years and that we're going to have some more severe flooding, even if not quite to that level, kind of off and on over there every few years from now on, and we have to prepare for that. Well, we certainly believe that to be the case. And boy, if you look at 2011, it isn't only a story about Irene. In February, we had the highest precipitation in recorded history for Vermont. That would be snow. It snowed 24 out of 28 days. In March, 
uh, we had the highest one day snow emergency. In April, we had the highest precipitation for the month of April, which led the snow melt and the rains led to lake flooding of historic proportions. And then we had flash flooding in central Vermont. So Irene, which came at the tail end of that, was the fourth declared flooding emergency. So we believe we must build stronger, more robust infrastructure in order to both make the future safer so that we don't have so many blowouts, but also reduce our future costs because we don't want FEMA coming back here uh, to another emergency, having to rebuild an undersized culvert. And will FEMA even do that again? Yes, but what we're trying to do is actually uh, get FEMA to reimburse our towns for their investment in meeting our state standard of a bigger culvert and a bigger bridge. And how are we succeeding in that? Right now, we actually are in a conversation. Really, we're challenging FEMA. We have an appeal before them. Uh, we believe that they are making short-sighted decisions in uh, basically telling towns they're only going to pay them to put back an undersized culvert, a culvert that has been proven to be not able to withstand the flooding. So um, we're pushing ahead. We are supporting towns uh, across this state who are uh, trying to build the right infrastructure and are being told uh, in some cases by FEMA that that is not eligible. We're going to appeal that decision. And we. And this includes Bennington? You're, uh, in Bennington, it's a different, it's story, different story, but another very important story. There, it relates to debris removal. Right. You know, the Roaring Branch literally was filled in with enormous boulders, trees, and silt. And there was no river there. I mean, really, rivers changed course entirely. So in this case, the town had to work immediately to restore the river channel so that it wouldn't create more risk to all kinds of buildings and people. And in doing so, we believe they are eligible for what's called emergency protective measures by FEMA. And uh, unfortunately, uh, last week, the town of Beddington was told no. FEMA didn't believe they were eligible. If you get into the details here, it relates to uh, FEMA saying, well, yes, the town is eligible for this, but we can't pay them because there's another federal another agency. Another agency. No, I, I talked to uh, the manager down there about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so we don't think that a Vermont town or the state of Vermont should be held hostage to two federal agencies that are uh, claiming uh, jurisdiction. But you're also, so you're also dis uh, having disputes with FEMA over culvert size. You want them to be bigger. That's right. And anything else? Well, right now, those are the major things. Um, you know, in addition, there's the state uh, facility, the well, Waterbury State right, Office Complex, right. and the Vermont State Hospital. Now, but I will tell you that, you know, when you look at the big picture, you know, the federal government has really come to our aid in a very significant way, and we are eternally grateful. Uh, and we will continue to work very hard to make sure the projects get through the system. There are 3,000 projects projected to go through the FEMA Public Assistance Program. Right now, there are over 2,700 of them have been approved by FEMA. So we see that we're 88% of the way there, which comes up to about $106 million. That said, we are now to the point where those uh, unresolved issues are what's on my plate. And uh, you know, we know of 100-some projects where there really is still some conflict or unresolved issues with FEMA. And we are working very hard to support towns uh, in these uh, negotiations with FEMA about what's eligible and what's not. And when FEMA decides that something is not eligible, we are going to support that town's right to appeal a FEMA decision.